<laughs> to be on this call with you. How have you been, friend? <laughs> I have been great, Lindsay. It is so wonderful uh, to have this conversation with you. I am a big admirer and a fan for a very long time. I'm just so honored that we have time to spend some time together this afternoon. Well, the feeling is completely mutual. And I'm I'm thinking back. I don't know if you remember this, but I remember it. Um, that I met you as I was exiting the hotel where the yes. NEA Foundation for Teaching Excellence was. It was in Washington, D.C. And yes. we were both being honored from our states at this big gala event, which was beautiful and wonderful. And also, I mean, teachers, so rarely do we get to go to these big fancy events. So I remember mm -hmm. feeling just really wonderfully overwhelmed. But I remember... Mm -hmm walking out of the hotel and you were arriving with your family and yes. I literally went, oh, I know him, that's Alison and he's amazing. <laughs> And I also know quite a few people from your cohort who mm -hmm. I buddied up with who said, oh my gosh, wait till you meet Alison. He's amazing. So I remember us meeting in person and me fanning out over the fact that we were finally getting to meet in person. So I'm glad that I have this opportunity today to redeem myself. <laughs> no, actually. So I have to say that I'm smiling a lot because that's a moment that stays with me even today. Because I remember you were like, oh my God, I'm smiling out. Like, yes. Why no use? <laughs> yes. But you yeah. know, it's it's just been, you know, so great. So <laughs> Yes. And that to me, that's like the beauty of this. You know, I know we're, we're, we want to talk about the conference that's coming up with InStoy July yes. 24th through the 26th in Denver. The mm -hmm. beauty of this to me is, you know, you're from a different cohort. I'm from a different cohort, but we follow each other and support each other's work and elevate each other's work. And mm -hmm. to me, that's the beauty of InStoy is just meeting passionate educators all, mm -hmm. all throughout the country who don't really think they're doing anything remarkable. You know, you're just doing what you're passionate about. Um, but then to meet and be inspired by people like you and everyone at InStory, it's just, it's a good, it's a pretty cool experience. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, InStory is a family. I mean, you, when you bring together a group of like-minded individuals who are passionate about this profession and are in there for the right reasons, magic happens. And yes. this is the exciting thing about, you know, uh, end story. Mm -hmm. Yes, I agree. And just getting to follow your work. And I know, you know, it's so I know you don't do it for the accolades, although you certainly have a very celebrated, decorated career. Um, I remember you sharing your story and and then your your keynote that you're giving at InStoy. Um, mm -hmm. It was uh, Impact, right? Adversity. Yes. In what was your title? I want to make sure I get that right. Yeah, it's basically called Teaching for Impact, uh, yes. Turning Adversity into Opportunity. And, you know, the, the concept behind it is this idea of I always like to take, you know, my audience back to that interview chair. When you sat in that interview room for the first time talking about why you want to become an educator, you know, think about the passion you brought to that room. Think about, you know, how you represented yourself in that room, how convincing you were until you got the job. So, you know, so. I want, I like to remind my audience of that moment and never to forget it because, you know, it is Nietzsche who said that he who has a way to live for can endure almost anyhow. Now, this job is uh, on a daily basis. It's always important to remind educators why we went into this job, why we, why we went into this profession in the first place. That's, well, I mean, you're, Yes. Uh, uh, so I am fortunate I get to work with aspiring educators who are still on fire for education and they're not yet jaded by the politics of education. They're eager mm -hmm. for that first interview. They're they're, you know, just excited and and mm -hmm. to be able to witness and help cultivate and support that and and be a support system as they journey into the profession is um, is something that I take a lot of pride in. And so, um, you know, and that, that's something that I actually wanted to learn a little bit. I don't know if it is possible mm -hmm. more about educators rising, because I, I think, yes. you know, the work that you all do is so noble and wonderful. More well, people know about it. 
Well, thank you. Well, so for those of you who don't know me, I wear a couple of hats. Um, and so the first is edu I, I am the Educators Rising Illinois State Coordinator, which means I work with high school students all throughout the state who are interested in education. Um, and, you know, one of my philosophies was every community in Illinois, in the country, but every community in Illinois, the state that I live in, should have the resources they need to start their own Grow Your Own programs. And I know Grow Your Own means different things in different spaces, but I'm speaking primarily to growing the next generation of your the profession, you know, with, with students. And what I love about Ed Rising is, um, you know, I've been in a lot of situations where a bunch of, you know, stakeholders and experts will sit around in a room and try to solve the problem that is the teacher shortage in Illinois. And I always say, there's not a shortage. We There are lots of young people who see the value of this profession and want to enter the profession, but we have to offer them support systems along the way and make access into our profession more equitable so that all students have the opportunity to choose teaching as a profession. And so my work with Ed Rising, what I love about it is it capitalizes on the great teaching happening throughout our state because teachers are the most uniquely positioned to market education and teaching and our profession to young people, right? Um, so I work with teacher leaders in high school and even middle school students throughout the state who um, want to explore education and trying to, you know, offer that as a career option early on. Um, I also, so we had our uh, third annual state conference last month, and we had over 700 high school students from the most southern to the most northern part of our state, all from very different communities and backgrounds, but um, who are being, you know, getting supports to have grow your own programs at their school. And it was just, it's, it's my joy. And then I also, I am the early career development and aspiring ed director for the Illinois Education Association. So I run our collegiate aspiring ed program for students and educator prep programs throughout the state. Um, we also had our big conference in April and it was, it was very well attended and great. And um, actually our good, one of our Instoy family members, Gerardo Munoz came and um, delivered uh, the keynote and he was magical um, and which speaks to the beautiful network of the Instoy family and we're going to get you house on you're going to have to come um, keynote for us one sometime I might have to make that happen and then yeah. um, <laughs> if you're available and mm -hmm. then um, I run our early career uh, program and we, we do a lot of professional development and, and early career support so I really do have like high school to college to early career um, you know and just trying to really equip them with the skills and the tools sets that maybe I didn't feel I had um, to always advocate for myself and my students when I started into the profession. They are entering the profession on fire for education and on fire for challenging systems that aren't always set up to for all of our students to be successful. So that that's my work in a nutshell. I want to hear more about what you're doing. <laughs> Yeah, um, so I am still in the classroom. I uh, enjoy teaching U.S. history, government, and economics uh, to my students uh, each year, along with the, you know, the other initiatives I do at my school, such as run, running the student government program, the morning class, the SEL program, and countless other programs that I'm a part of uh, each and every day. But then uh, outside of the classroom, I, you know, work doing workshops around the country in different districts. Uh, summer is usually crazy. Keynoting uh, all over the country is a great joy because, you know, you get a chance to meet, you know, these young aspiring educators who we just talked about uh, who are thinking about profession, but you know, I'm not quite sure, is this the right fit for me? Yada, yada, yada. And then, you know, when they hear your story and, you know, at the end they come to you and say, wow, you have validated my belief in this profession. You know, there isn't much joy that comes, you know, or, uh, that's more than that. Um, and then recently I, you know, based on you know, what I have learned in the U.S., also trying to see how I could expand, you know, this, these opportunities to, you know, uh, countries, that are less uh, you know, fortunate than the US. So I am from the Gambia, which is in West Africa. So I established you know, an educational foundation uh, a few months ago, and we just uh, launched and actually concluded our first inaugural National Teacher of the Year program. Um, wow. Yeah, so it was really, really wonderful. Um, so we basically, you know, modulate, you know, with CCSSO with an NEA, took, you know, the best of both worlds and combined them together and, you know, uh, created this magic. And I'm so blessed and fortunate that 
27 educators from the U.S. joined me for that, uh, which, which was, you know, so wonderful because to see all these wonderful individuals across the country uh, come in to support Gambian educators, it's something that I am uh, deeply grateful for. So, so in the subsequent years, we also look forward to having Lindsay in the Gambia. A hundred percent. I'm there. You just give me the dates. I'm there. But I think that speaks to so much about what we believe about education, that we are each other's greatest resource. And we have so much to learn from one another if we're simply willing to be humble and vulnerable and learn. And I what an opportunity to get to learn from educators and and, and, and in other countries. I just think that 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 is so important and instrumental in growth in our profession is is capitalizing on these opportunities to really mm -hmm. spend time together and learn from mm -hmm. one another. And Absolutely, mm -hmm. because education is one of those things. Like the way I envision it, you know, when we we you know we have doctors without borders. I mean, it, it's like for me, it's like education without borders. Knowledge should <sighs> be able, you know, flow freely across the world because we can learn so much from them, and they could also learn so much from us. And if we, you know, like the cohort I went with, you know, they, one of the feedback was how grateful they were to learn about a number of, you know, things we teach in the U.S. from an Africa perspective. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, getting to learn about the culture and the people, because, you know, nowadays, you know, whether you, no matter where you are in the country, there is, you know, influx of people coming in from different parts of the world. So having a global understanding of you know, the wall is important in order to be effective in your classroom. I love that. And what a beautiful thing to model for our students, too, the importance of globalization, the importance of being global citizens, how we all have so much to learn from one another. You know, um, I just think what an opportunity, though. I mean it. If I get invited, I will I will be there. <laughs> Absolutely. So you certainly will so <laughs> be invited. I love for it. Sure. Yeah. And, so um, I yeah, yeah. You go ahead. You go ahead. No, no, so what I, you know, I'm always interested because, you know, you are so passionate about this profession. And, you know, I follow you, you know, religiously on Facebook. Whenever I see likewise, it, likewise. It brings me smiles. Uh, but I always did, uh, say to folks, when you see someone at your level, with your level of passion, there's usually an underlying story, right? Mm. High education. Mm. So, and I'm going to ask you the same. So I always say, um, I always say, I, I was not one of these people who knew that I wanted to be a teacher. Um, and it's so ironic now looking at like who I am and what I care about and what fuels my, fills my soul, fuels everything I do. I mean, it's just, it's genuinely my purpose in life, but I thought that I wanted to be a speech writer for politicians. I thought that was going to be how I left my mark on the world, that I would, you know, I would craft the words that some of the most influential people in our society delivered. And I got a degree in speech writing. And um, right after I graduated, I thought it would just be like a temporary, but I started out as an ESP. I took a job as a teacher's aide in a sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. At the time, it was called a BDED classroom. So just students who were, you know, struggling with emotions and, and you know, behavior needed extra behavioral supports. And um, I don't like the term at risk. So I just say, you know, students that needed some extra love. I always say, sometimes the students who need the most love from us will ask us for it in the most unloving of ways. And so we have to get to the root of why that is and, and figure out how to best support them and not see it as a deficit, but an opportunity for us to learn and grow as educators. So to summarize, hmm? I took a job as a teacher's aide in an environment that I'm, I'm confident would send a lot of adults running for the hills. That, and in that environment, I fell in love with education and I knew I, I, I knew I'd missed the mark. I'd missed my calling and that this was what I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And so I immediately enrolled in a master's program, which I'm still paying for. Uh, and, <laughs> and, and, and I'm happy too, because it was the best thing I've ever done. But I um, eventually got a doctorate in teaching and learning. I never had any plans to leave the classroom or go into administration. I just <laughs> wanted to learn everything I could about becoming the best teacher I could be. But, um, but, but working with kids changed me. Um, I, you know, I think we all have stories from our past and our our childhood that are, I had a really tough, tough freshman year of high school, um, just some traumatic things that had happened the summer before. And 
it was my English teachers who gave me this cathartic space to write and to really um, grapple with some things that I wasn't taking time to really grapple with, you know, in my daily life. But in the English classroom, I would see things come up that I would write about. And so in addition to that experience um, and the wonderful English teachers I had in high school, it just made sense that I became an English teacher. So junior, senior English language arts. And, and really, I, my, my whole mission in life was is to create those spaces for young people to figure out who they are and all that they're capable of. That's the beauty, I think, of teaching is we get the ability and the moments and the opportunities to see things in kids that they don't necessarily see in themselves. And that was what English, the English classroom was for me as a student and what I tried to provide to my students. And now what I try to provide to aspiring educators as they figure out who they are as their teacher selves. So I am interested to hear, I, I know a little bit about your story, but, I, but mm -hmm. I would love to hear even more. What about you? What made you decide? that this was for you? Yeah, so for me, um, never in my wildest dreams would I imagine that I would become a teacher. Um, for me, to, long story short, you know, after not going to school, backtrack. So after high school, I took six years off, uh, you know, because I just had a lot of family responsibilities back home, you know, in the Gambia, because I was a new immigrant you know, to the country. I came to the US during my junior year of high school and then by senior year graduated and then I had a lot of family challenges back home that I needed to you know, take care of and support. Uh, so I spent about six years doing that. So when I was ready to go back to school, um, no clue what I really wanted to study, but I knew that whatever I ended up studying, English and math would apply. So I just took those two courses, said, let me try it out. So I, I went to basically try out college. So I went to the local community college. And then, you know, that summer things changed because my 19-year-old sister at the time was diagnosed with hepatitis B in the Gambia. And, you know, the medical facilities back in the Gambia were not advanced to treat such a disease. So one of the ways we could have saved her life was to bring her to the States to get the care that she needed. And long story short, she was the visa. And then, you know, four months later, she passed away. And mm -hmm. then eight hours after she passed away, the grandmother who raised all of us also mm -hmm. passed away within 24 hours. So at that moment, my wall stopped. So, you know, I went back home to uh, for their funeral. And then upon my return to the U.S., then I became very clear on what I wanted to do with my life. You know, I was going to become an immigration lawyer to advocate for immigrant youth and immigrant families mm -hmm. so that hopefully another family would not go through what my family had been through. And that was that was basically my path, my path uh, in college. You know, did pre-law, political science and history, and then took the start. And I was in the process of putting my law school application together when, you know, my pre-law advisor asked, hey, why do you actually want to become a lawyer? So, you know, I explained to her the story of my family and what we had been through. And she thought about it for a while and said, hmm, if that is really your mission in life, I'm not sure law school is the place for you. It's like, whoa, why is that? So, well, think about it this way. By the time you are able to defend those kids in the courtroom, one of two things would be happening. They would either be heading to jail or they would be in the process of getting deported. So why don't you think about doing something that will ensure they never even have to see the courtroom? You know, mm. that, that one sentence, you know, why don't you think about doing something that will ensure they will never even have to see the courtroom? You know, that stayed with me for the past 15 years uh, since mm. I had that sentence. And after, after thinking about what that would look like, you know, I, I was reminded of what Nelson Mandela said, that education is the weapon that one can use to transform the world. And I decided that that's exactly what I'm going to commit my life to. And that's how I became an educator. So. And you are doing it. You are changing yeah. the world. You are. And I think that's that's like, I, I think there's so much negative rhetoric around surrounding our profession. And there's so much misinformation about what it is we do for mm -hmm. kids and for their families and mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. we and, and becoming a part of their lives and, you know, in these interesting ways. And, um, you know, I think often when I'm whenever aspiring educators ask, you know, why did you become a teacher? teacher yeah. I, I just think, you know, in what other profession do you get the opportunity to become 
a part of a student's life and their family's life and and to witness them accomplish and to be some small part in helping them figure out who they are in this world and what their purpose is. What a responsibility, but what a gift, what an honor and what a gift to be able to huge, get to do that. Huge, huge mm -hmm. gift. Just a quick thing on that. Just two days ago, I was invited at, uh, at Hunter College. You know, one of my uh, former students, who's now the student body president at Hunter College, you know, put, was putting together this panel on Black Pill initiatives programs across the city. And he invited me and a couple of uh, uh, other uh, individuals in the CUNY system. And, you know, we were, I was part of the panel, you know, and then at times I, I kind of I kind of forgot that I'm actually a panelist because I was just overcome with joy, you know, just yes. looking at this kid who seven years ago could not even write his name in English because uh, the country he came from, he did not go to school. He went to a Quranic school back in his country. Now, fast forward seven years later, here he is moderating in a panel, you know, in this huge, you know, space, you know, in, with his own, you know, with his confidence, diligence, professionalism. Oh, I tell you, man. Uh, that, that's, that's it. Those are the moments it. we live for. That's Those it. are the moments we live for. Yeah. That's it. That's it. And, you know, whenever people ask, why a teacher? I mean, that's, that's exactly why. You know, why why, why are you a teacher? That's exactly why. Because you do not only transform that particular student's life, but you transform their family narratives for generations. And mm -hmm. that's, you can't think of a better profession than that. So I agree. I agree. And I think, too, I think... I think it's important to remind educators about the power we hold in our classrooms. And a note on power, I always, I always, uh, Paolo Ferrari always says that powerlessness is the most insidious form of oppression because we as a profession or we as people or we as a group are made to believe that we don't hold the power to make change. And so therefore we do nothing and contribute to our own oppression, right? Yep. And I think about, this, and I call it a movement. I have seen a shift in our profession and our colleagues and in educators going, no, 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 we're going to stand up and fight for the things that are right for students, right for families. We're going to continue creating affirming spaces for students and their families. And you know, we, we will, we will, we will do that. And even if that's controversial, we're going to do that. And I think I, when I think about power and, t and education and teaching, I think, I think education is the foundation of our democracy. There's nothing more empowering than, than acquiring an education. And um, I, I think, again, just to be a part of someone's educational journey and know that I helped contribute to that, that empowerment I can't think of anything better. I just can't. And so, but also I think it speaks to the power of teaching and the power of our profession. And at times we feel like we're at the mercy of policy and events and decisions and things, you know, that maybe we weren't, we didn't get the the, the opportunity to be at the table to make those decisions. But when, if I see this movement in that when 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 there's bad policy that's passed that negatively mm -hmm. impacts students, you're going to hear mm -hmm. from us. You're going to hear from educators and we're going to raise our teacher voices. Right. And I, to me, I, I think I have such a network here at Instoy of, of educator friends who help walk me through that when it's challenging, you know. Absolutely. And Absolutely. And speaking about Instoy, what are you looking forward to the conference? Oh my gosh, how much time do we have? Um, so I, I do always, I'm actually bringing a couple of friends who've never experienced the in-story mm -hmm. conference before, um, because I always say to everyone, this is the one conference I won't miss. Um, and, and I think sometimes there are misconceptions, like, is it just for state teachers of the year? Absolutely yeah, yes. not. It is for all educators. And I think, you know, I think for me, what I get from in-story every year is I, I leave feeling rejuvenated. Mm -hmm. I think summer is always a time where I try to press pause a little bit and, and really reflect on, you know, the year and, and from the previous summer and in store is mm -hmm. kind of a time I always do that to go, okay, mm -hmm. here's where I was last year. What's the work I'm doing now. And mm -hmm. to me, what I look forward to the most is like I said, we're each other's greatest resource. So just having time to connect mm -hmm. with educators throughout the country 
who are, you know, and I'll, and I'll say the best in their field, that's, but that's great, but that's not why they're doing it. They're not doing it for accolades. They're not doing it to be the best. They're mm-hmm. doing it because they believe in the power of this work and, and in celebrating that and in mm-hmm. sharing the goods. And mm-hmm. I leave this conference every year having attended a keynote or breakout sessions or just having had a conversation at a lunch with someone that makes me, I, I'm on the plane ride home every year, just like, mm, I got to I gotta revisit that when I get home because that was very cool, right? And those are the moments I live for are the little, the moments where I go, mm, I got I to gotta revisit this when I get home. Mm-hmm. Because I'm so inspired by the people and the conversations and the work that's being done. And um, to me, Instoy is a celebration of that and a sharing mm-hmm. out of what's happening in the field mm-hmm. and an opportunity to bring it back to Illinois. What about you? What are you most looking forward to? Absolutely. So I have to say, this is my first time at Instoy, actually. This would be my first time. So over the past mm-hmm. years, every year I plan to, but like I said, summer is usually so crazy for me. But what I'm so looking forward to is that once, you know, I put, put it out there that I'm going to be at end store. So many of, you know, my 2019 cohort oh my God, will be there too. We'll be there too. Yes. So it's more, more like a family reunion to begin with. Yes. Um, but more importantly, I think when you put, again, a group of like-minded people together, it's just a space where a lot of good things can happen. So mm-hmm. I am really looking forward to that, uh, connecting, uh, learning, and basically think, uh, just like you, you, you just eloquently put it, coming back and implementing what I have gained from the experience. Yes, oh, I love that. I do, and and I I always anticipate just those mm-hmm. impromptu moments where again, when you just have a conversation with someone you've never met and you learn about what they're doing, and I feel mm-hmm. like I leave. So my cohorts there, the, all the 2018 state teachers of the year, but also mm-hmm. I meet so many new people where I go, oh my gosh, you work with aspiring ed too. Oh, you're doing this in your state. I want. Can we maybe connect when I get back to Illinois? Let's set up a call, and truly it is an opportunity to support each other's work and to learn from one another. And I just, it's like I said, it's the one conference I will go to every summer. I'll never miss it. And I always know that I'm going to leave feeling challenged in a really good way, feeling inspired and, and, and with a new network of resources and and wonderful people who can help answer questions as I unpack all that I learned once I get back to Illinois. So so yeah, absolutely. It's wonderful. Well, this has just been yeah. lovely. I think we, uh, I, we're going to have to find time to have some conversations in person when we're at Instaway this summer. <laughs> absolutely. Yes. The 24th to the 26th. Definitely. I would, I, I'm, I'm getting there, you know, I think the 23rd, I believe I'll be staying yes. there. So at some point we will definitely have time to connect in person. Okay. Definitely. And I will be there. That's the 20, just see Denver, July 24th to the 26th. I will be there um, on the 24th. I'm actually hosting for all new, um, all aspiring educators in Colorado, uh, high school students, college mm-hmm. students. We are, our in day of service is going mm-hmm. to be for up and coming aspiring educators. And so we're doing a whole day of free professional development from one to five on the 24th. And mm-hmm. I'll be bringing in lots of different friends and breakout presenters and panelists to talk to the next generation of our profession about what they've learned and and Mm -hmm. to share the messages they have. So I can't wait. And I can't wait to meet you again in person and to continue this conversation. I look forward to it, friend. Absolutely. This has been great and looking forward to more of it.